It's time for another track battle. This time in a turbocharged Miata versus a supercharged Miata. We are gonna get on the track as fast as we can. Before we do, just a quick rundown on each car. This is obviously an NA Miata. That's the chassis code, but it's not NA under the hood. This is a turbocharged Miata that makes about 235 at the wheel. As you can see, it's got a bunch of aero on it. It's got 225 Hankook RS4s on it. That's all you really need to know, other than it's owned and built by our buddy Rajan at R-Theory. And the other car is an NB from Anjavar Motorsports out in Peterborough, Ontario. And it has a twin screw supercharger on it. It makes about 220 at the wheel. You can see they're on the CSCS spec tire, the Pirelli P0s. It also has a bunch of aero on it. This should be a really close battle. Let's get to it. All right. We are off in the Turbo Miata. I know very little about this car. I'm just gonna rip it on uh, faith, see what happens, and we'll give you guys a full walk around afterwards. We figured we'd start you off with some track action and then uh, get down to the nitty gritty afterwards. I was told that the, the rev limiter is set to 7200 RPM and uh, watch the oil and water temps, obviously. It is a hot, muggy day here at Toronto Motorsports Park. It's our 11 turn home track. And this thing makes some good jam. Oh man, I don't have a lot of room for heel and toe though. This could be a challenge. Feels strong, I'm not gonna, not gonna lie. It's gonna be tough for a supercharger to battle this turbo power. First lockout over there that's freaking me out. I think I only need to go to fourth gear here. So bumpy in turn one. But yeah, I think fourth gear and turn one's the way to go. Probably only need fourth gear here. And I go down to third in between maybe, eh? Oh boy. <laughs> that's fun. I don't know, I don't think it has power steering. It's, it's got really heavy steering, but a ton of feedback, like it, you feel every pebble on the road. It's probably a 90 or something. Not a lot of technology on here that Rajan hasn't added himself. Oh yeah, little brake lock up. It's a, such an analog car. There's, I don't think there's ABS either. Well, 121.3, not bad. I think this car definitely has a low 120, high 119 in it. If I just clean my act up a bit. But it is what it is need seat time in any car to really get the absolute most out of it and those are some pretty ragged laps. Ergonomically this car presents some challenges for me. I'm a little big for it. I am now in the supercharged NB on Javari Motorsports car and uh, with the windshield banner. I can still see. They were worried I wouldn't be able to see but the bigger concern is it's starting to rain. So we'll see what happens there but Man, I love the supercharger wine already. Sounds so cool. I feel like I'm uh, driving a, a muscle car with that gear wine out of the supercharger. So good. I've got better clearance on the steering column. Wow, turn in response is crazy. Oh, it's got power steering. <laughs> the other car had no power steering. Very linear power band. This kind of feels like an NA car with. A lot more top end, like as the boost builds, it just keeps accelerating. It does take a minute before it feels like it's getting into boost. They have a really interesting setup with two throttle bodies that we'll show you after these sessions to try to help you understand what's going on under the hood. The brakes are nice too, they're power assisted, where in the other car I think it was manual brakes. It feels like a completely different car. How interesting. Try third and turn one here, see how it likes it. Woo! <laughs> yeah, the gearing is low. 
longer too, I would say. I think Rajan has a different gearbox. This seems to like the kind of typical gearing that I'm used to around here, like third gear and then fourth and fifth on the straights. These Pirellis don't seem to have that much grip for a, a true semi-slick tire. You really don't feel any grippier than the Hankooks. But it's a very neutral car. It doesn't have that turn-in understeer that Rajan's car was suffering from. Such a nice car to drive. Such composed, easy to balance on throttle. Just a pleasure. Wow, those are surprisingly different cars. I thought the only difference I would feel would be in the way the turbo delivers power versus the way the supercharged delivers power. By the way, I should mention they're both 1.8 liter. This is the newer Jenner 1.8. This is with uh, with VVT, VVTI or whatever it's called, variable, variable valve timing. This one doesn't have that. And obviously the turbo does hit harder in the mid-range and, and does feel faster down the straightaways. The supercharger, as you expect, felt very linear and it has that super cool gear wine that I hope you guys all enjoyed. It's got that like Shelby Cobra sound to it. But man, the driving experiences were totally, completely different. First of all, as you saw in the video, I was struggling for leg room to heel and toe, so that was compromising my ability to really rev match well and, and attack the corner entries as well as I would want to in a car like this. But more than that, with the manual steering, it's you know, very heavy. You feel everything, but it's very heavy. So it's, it's a very involved car. It's like you're in a go-kart. Your whole body's being used to drive it. It's well balanced, but it does have that little bit of turn in understeer, which I'm sure we could dial out if Rajan had some time to turn the knobs on its shocks, which we'll tell you more about in a minute. But it, it's just a much more physical car to drive, and yet you're in a much more confined space, where in this car, with power steering, the seat's on the floor, I've got better leg room for heel and toe. It's got much longer gearing, by the way. They have different uh, diffs and different rear ends in these cars, so um, in this car, I was running out of revs a lot more than I was in this one. It just sort of had better gear spacing for this track, I would say. It just felt like a really easy car to drive. It reminded me a lot of my RX-8, a very composed chassis. I could slide it around all day long, never wanted to bite me. The Pirellis I wasn't a huge fan of. It's very uh, numb tire, doesn't give you a lot of feedback. At least with the Hankooks, even though I had that bit of turn and understeer, it's a very communicative tire, so it was telling me what was going on. So in that aspect, throw those tires on that car and I think we'd go even a little bit better than we did. Anyway, super interesting. Lap times, you guys want to know lap times. Uh, only one session in each car, three laps, that's it. Need a lot more time in, to figure out this car to its limit, but I did a 121.3. This car was super easy to drive. I did a 121.9. So only six tenths of a difference between the two. I think that gap would widen a bit with more time in each one. I think I was closer to the potential of the supercharged car because it was so easy to drive. This one's got like a 119 in it to me. This one's probably got like a high 120 in it. So I would guess there's a second and a half between them with, you know, dialing it into the max, but really close as is and it's both super fun to drive. All right. Enough of my mouth, let's talk to the owners and uh, tell you guys a little bit more about the technical underside of these cars. This is Rajan, everybody, from R Theory Motorsports. He's done some stuff for us, actually. You remember that, uh, what did you make for me? The Badass 2000 battery, battery bracket. Battery tie-down, yeah. yes. He's got, he's got engineering skills. As a matter of fact, these vents are some of your products, right? Yeah, exactly. This is new, I haven't released it yet. Uh, this is custom on, one off for my car, but okay. I make similar vents for NA and B Miatas. Okay. I just released the S2000 one as well. Okay. Your car, super fun to drive. Manual steering, high yeah, effort. Exactly. Tons of feel through the steering. Yeah. The turbo hits hard. I did get it a little too hot. It's a GTX yeah, 2860R. All right, okay. Yeah. And it's a 1.8 non-variable valve timing motor? Yeah, so it's from an NB1, 99-2000 Miata. Okay. And we're thinking it makes about 230 to 240 at the wheel. wheel. It's been street tuned, he hasn't yeah. had on a dyno. What about the rest of it? We know it's got the Hankook RS4s on it. How about brakes, so suspension? Brakes, it has a track speed engineering front big brake kit, okay. stock rear brakes, and I'm running PFC01 pads at the front and Ray Bessel's SD42 in the back. Okay. So it's all like aggressive track pads. Yeah. I have AST 5100 coilovers. Okay. So they're nice and digressive. Yeah. Inside, obviously, you got a race seat and a race steering wheel. Exactly. And that's about it. Yeah. This is Brad and Rob, the father-son duo from Anjavar Motorsports. Did I say that right? Anjavar. Anjavar. I was close, close you know. Yeah. <laughs> with the little Canadian-ness there. 
you guys got into this fairly recently, three or four years ago? Well, even sooner, like more recent than that. It was probably about two years ago was my first lapping day ever. And since then, it's just- It's got hooked. Yeah, yeah. Kind of downhill, definitely uphill though. <laughs> so this started as a street cruiser? Yeah, yeah. All from there. actually my wife is mom, and that's yeah. why he's got Sorry Mom on the- Ah, the wing says Sorry Mom on he, it, okay. He took it over, he did a couple little mods, and then we, we went crazy that's with what, it. That's yeah. what family's for. Exactly. Yeah. So, first of all, let me say, you guys have built a great car. It's super well balanced. Thank it's you. a blast Thank you. to drive. It's very neutral. I could just get in and go fast right away. It just inspired confidence. So well done for guys who aren't like full-time race car builders. Yeah, you no. really knock it out of the park. Can you tell us a little bit about the build? I know you've got a 1.8 engine as well. Yeah, so it's, it's got the variable. It's an NV2. Okay. So it's VVT yeah. on the 1.8. Yeah. Uh, and then other than that, everything's stock with added supercharger. And you've got that unique dual throttle body yeah, setup. So, Explain to me that. So it's rigged up like a turbo. So throttle body still at the intake. Yeah but then it needs a throttle body at the back of the blower to stop making boost at idle. Okay. Otherwise it would whine, get red hot, and we'd know this because testing. Okay. <laughs> you figured <laughs> We've this almost, out the hard almost way. blown up a blower. It oh, was wow. red hot in literally 30 seconds, okay. making probably say eight pounds of boost at idle. Wow. Yeah, so what so blower is it? It's the MP62. So okay. the bigger version of the most common twin screw kits okay. from BRP. Yeah. And then, but that's pretty much just the mount. Everything else is hand built by us. Did all in your yeah. home garage. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. The rest of the build, what do you have for suspension and brakes? HSD Mono Pros for okay. suspension. Yeah. Up front, we have the Willwood six piston kit yeah. with Willwood pads, the BP40s. Yeah. And then in the back, all stock, Okay. except for, I think, currently Hawk pads. Okay. Any other secret stuff? You've obviously got a Kirky yeah. seat in there. Kirky race seat. Stock steering wheel. Stock, yeah. stock, pretty much everything. Yeah. RX-8 shift knob, as yeah. you pointed out. And the wing is also APR? APR, yeah. yeah. With the went, risers. Yeah, the 3D it's, wing? Yeah, it's the GT. GT 200 maybe? 250, I 250. think. 250, okay. Same yeah. one we run on our S2000. Yeah. They've got good taste. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, you built a really fun car, and I felt like I could drive it at the limit right away. Like, it was just so well balanced, yeah. so mm -hmm. confidence inspiring. I just, I want to get them a set of RE71Rs now yeah, and see how fast we, we can we really used to, go. used to have them. I don't mean to be dissing Pirelli here, people, <laughs> but the car felt like it just wants a little bit more grip. Well, I think we're going to call this track battle a wrap. It was a super fun day to be able to rip two Miatas out. On paper, it might have seemed like they were similar, but it turns out they're totally different driving experiences and yet surprisingly close on lap times. 121.9, 121.3. Things up to you guys to decide which one you'd rather have. For me, sorry Rajan, but I'm going supercharged on this one. It's so easy to drive. Before we go, let's make this like an epic rap battle where you guys tell us in the comments section what you want for our next track battle. Do you want a FDRX7 versus an FCRX7? Do you want a Corvette versus a Mustang? Let us know down there. Be sure to give us a thumbs up if you want more track battles too, and uh, don't be afraid to use the subscribe button. I promise it doesn't hurt a bit, and it does help us grow the channel and bring more of this kind of craziness to you. All right, I gotta go do my seatbelt back up. Actually, you know what, I'll just pull in right here and do it. Sorry about this, guys. It's embarrassing. It's just uh, not a lot of room between uh, my, the steering wheel and the cam lock here. It's the Miata deal, right? She's a tight to fit.